Walking downstream, I'm always keeping an eye out what is drifting in or on the surface. An increase in emerges might suddenly mean that a hatch could be imminent. And so get yourself to the base of a riffle or wherever you can capitalize on that experience. You might see duns fluttering about. And if so, just simply take note of their coloration, their size, and whereabouts they are. And be prepared to switch over if you suddenly see a few risers. Keep an eye out for spinners fluttering amongst the air and then dropping like stones to the surface. Or spent spinners following the currents downstream. Again, take note of their coloration and their size, for this is what you'll need to match within moments if the fish start responding. Size, colour and positioning are pretty much the keys to matching the hatch on the Matara. Now with the population of fish in the Matara, you don't necessarily need a long section of water to entertain your afternoon hatch. Right now I have a nice little riffle and drop off above which is going to feed a lot of mayfly down through here. I have a nice calm section of water close to the bank here and I have a nice current concentrating coming off the edge of that tree. I anticipate this is where you could find a lot of fish come that magical moment when the emerges start to take flight. Now when choosing water for your afternoon rise, I always tend to like to find a good, solid, stable riffle with lots of cobbles. This means lots of insects and good, good enough currents to wash down into a foam line or a concentrated series of currents below. The more food in one place, the more intense the hatch is going to be. So find where all the food's going to come from, look at where it's going to go and position yourself accordingly. Right here I have a very nice gravelly drop off falling into a nice stable rocky riffle below. That then flows into a big, long, slow, deep pool, which is going to harbour lots of fish. It has a very intense foam line down one side of the pool, which is going to focus a lot of insects through there, and also two or three smaller currents in towards the edges, where fish may move out to when the hatch gets heavy. So I know this isn't the Matara, but it's a river, and it has hatches too. Hey, just a point I wanted to touch on, I kind of forgot earlier on, when, uh, with the lack of dry fly activity in the afternoon, is about our hatches. So, what is a hatch? A hatch is a synchronised emergence of our nymphs. As the nymphal sharks fill up with gases, they drift downstream and lift to the surface. Now at the surface, the shark splits open and the adult mayfly crawls out. This is the emerger, one of the most important phases in matching the hatch. Trout will often feed on emergers to the exclusion of anything else, no matter what else is on the water. They hatch out in big numbers. They're sitting there stuck beneath or in the surface film. They're, they're helpless, they cannot get away, so they are very easy pickings. Now, once that emerging mayfly crawls through the surface, uh, its wings unfold, it sits on the surface, and it drifts downstream a distance until the wings can straighten out, dry out, and it can pump up with air and fly off. That is called the dun. So the emerger is the nymph stuck at the surface film, ejecting its nymphal shuck with the adult climbing out, and the dun sits upon the surface. Now fly-wise, I fish CDC emerges in similar patterns almost exclusively throughout this hatch. I fish parachutes and flush floating film flies that sit low in the surface because they're more imitative of the flies that the fish are more likely to take. I don't use a lot of upright or upwing style mayflies like Dad's favourites and exactly because I find that if the fish are feeding on duns, they'll happily uh, accept a low riding emerger pattern, whereas if they're feeding on emergers, that's all they will take. Okay, so looking for more hatchy, cooler weather, I've travelled further south and found some cooler conditions with cloud cover. Mayfly dislike direct heat, and so bright sunlight often, rare, often results in more of an extended trickle of a hatch. Not really a big, uh, a big event with all the heads up rising. Now I do have a bit of a subly breeze, so I've chosen a section with a willow line behind me on the south side to give a bit of a break. However, I'm going to move up into this nice soft riffle, so I feel this is what's going to get those fish going earlier on in the day. Now you can almost set your clock to the 2.30 hatch um, in autumn and it's about 2 o'clock now and everything's starting to happen. I'm noticing a few more birds starting to play. Just diving, ducking, looking for mayfly. And so I think that's a good sign of what's, what's going to lay ahead. I'm going to move into position, see if I can pick a couple of fish off at of the base of the riffle with the dry dropper. And I'm going to leave that top section up by that point with that nice little current seam for when the hatch occurs. Okay, so here I am 2 o'clock, awaking the famous 2.30ish Matara Autumn Hatch. 
Now the temperature's cooled down here with the advent of more cloud and a southerly. So I'm sitting here anticipating something to happen. So I found a nice wee riffle with a bunch of small seams coming off rocks, coal seams and beaches. Places that will congregate food and set it down one little current line and the fish are going to move into and take advantage of. For this I've chosen my 8 foot 8 4 weight Scott G with an airflow tactical 4 weight fly line. I'm fishing a 10 foot 5x trout hunter tapered nylon leader with 5x tippet going to a wee size 16 CDC emerger, something I can see the silhouette in this glary low light sort of riffle. Now let's move up, let's look, watch for bird activity and let's see what's going to happen. Okay so the wind's picking up which is unfortunate, however I still got some nice riffly water ahead of me and the bird activity starting to improve so I still anticipate a, a rise. Now coming to a couple of thoughts, first of all read the rise. Is the fish holding at the surface? Can you see him at the surface? Can you see the V of his bow wave while he's sitting at the surface? If so, land the fly close to him, let it drift over him before it gets a chance to drag, but wait till it gets well below him before you lift it off the water and risk spooking him. Do you think the fish is coming up from the bottom and rising? If so, he could be a long way above where he's sipping, and that could actually be quite difficult. Try and read where the fish is positioned and cover him well. Move in from a diagonal or across stream and pitch the fly above him only as far as you need to, just so that you don't get too much drag. Okay, let's have a quick chat about a hook set. Now, if you, if you uh, follow the traditional dry fly take, the fish eat your fly, you lift the rod, bang, you set the hook, that can work. However, in the shallower riffles where fish are more grabby, they like to grab your fly and drop it very quickly, that moment of slack line as you lift the rod, there's slack, 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 until you set that hook, you're likely to miss a lot of quick takes and have a lot of rejections. So, one thing I like to do, if my rod tips down, I'm keeping in touch, is pull backwards and downwards downstream, just bang. Straight away, you absorb the slack line, you set that hook. Now, I'll demonstrate that shortly, but one big thing to remember is we use longer, slower sort of strips, and a fish hits, my hand's too far away to actually do anything. You know, I can't absorb any slack, and I can't set that hook. So I'm gonna use shorter, faster strips to keep in touch. Bang, I'm straight into it. Now check this out. Now an added benefit of this low backwards and sideways hook set is that you're not ripping the line off the water, disturbing that entire run if you miss that strike or if it wasn't a strike in the first place. And when nymphing shallow riffles, you will hit the bottom a lot, even with unweighted nymphs. Your indicator will drop and you must react. Now if you lift that line up, bang, you're going to tear that surface, you're going to spook any fish in that scene and chances are you're going to go fishless. However, moving it through, just tweak it tweak it, remember all you have to do is move that hook this much to actually set the hook and if there's weight, boom, you've got him. Hey, that's another quick striking tip. Let's go see if these fish are going to start rising at any time soon. Now, I'm going to be keeping an eye on the water because quite simply you should start seeing an abundance of emerges starting to show up in the shallows. And that's a good sign that it hatches them in it. When that happens, I'm going to end up by that point in the distance. There's a really nice uh, current seam coming off that rock which should harbour quite a few fish once the mayfly show. Bird activity is a reliable indicator of mayfly activity. And so I'm going to move through slowly, watch and see where the birds are, how they escalate, and which parts of the riffle they tend to focus on. That is where I'm going to sit and watch and wait for that 2.30 magical mark. My general rig is going to be about 15 foot leader to fly. It's going to be about 5x to 6x tip in. I'm going to be using a small size 16 to 18 CDC emerger, a little up wing, which has quite a dark silhouette because in this glare, it's going to be very hard to see a white parachute post. Also, if you're indicating them, then consider that and use a darker, stronger silhouette on your indicators. You can actually see it because, as mentioned in the nymphing segment, if you can't see your indicator, it's not really an indicator, is it? Let's see what happens. I'm going to move up towards those birds. See what shows. Now looking ahead of me, I have a number of seams. Firstly, off this point in the mid right of your photo, you've got a wee seam that pushes out to the left. That's going to congregate a lot of food that's drifting downstream into that one small current. And so fish are likely to move up into that as a hatch commences. Secondly, if you have a look at that next wee riffle, just below the next gravel beach, you can see it's quite a wide expansive riffle. Again, you've got a lot of small current seams through there which you can focus on, and surely enough, you're going to see a bunch of heads pop up once the mayfly show. I'm going to move them out the edge of this riffle, just looking for the odd fish that may show before the hatch. They will be out there nymphing. I'm just looking for the odd fish that may want to lift early enough for me to throw an emerger. 
Now, as the hatch phases out, start looking for little eddies and calm slack edges like I have immediately behind me here, where uh, emerges or spinners or uh, aborted duns may end up drifting into wallowing round at the ready pickings for trout. Finding a bunch of eddies and little slack, slack water edges can often extend your dry fly opportunities well beyond when that hatch finishes. And also focus on the main predominant seams with the dry dropper following, because there will still be fish looking to look up. Hey, so we were thwarted by quite a strong sou-westerly that came through and just ripped up the surface um, around that sort of quarter past 2, 2 ish hatch mark. Unfortunately, we didn't have any mayfly coming off, so we couldn't show you any heads coming up and our approach to hitting the Matara hatch. However, what I did do is I worked my way back up this, uh, this beach here, gently nymphing seams with a small indicator nymph set up like I did earlier on in the day. And that produced several nice fish uh, within a short period of time. And I thought I'd just wander back down towards the car with a dry fly on the end and just look in the hope that something will poke their head up. Anyway, I hope this is a good overview to my approach to the Matara from nymphing throughout the mornings looking for spinnerfuls, my approach to spinnerfuls and presentations, and what I do in search of the afternoon hatch. Hey, I'm Chris Dorr and I hope you enjoy. Take care.